Hello everyone. Welcome to our first Volta Latino Google Hangout of the Year. We're excited to be here today at the Department of Health and Human Services with HHS Secretary Sylvia Burwell to talk about the Affordable Care Act and its impact on the Latino community. I want to thank you for joining us for, and everyone tuning in, especially those who submitted questions for our program today. For those who aren't familiar, we are currently in the middle of the second enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act. Since the first enrollment period last year, 2.6 million Latinos, 18 to 64, have gained health insurance coverage, resulting in nearly 8% drop in the Latino uninsured rate. But today, approximately one in four Latinos still remain uninsured. Let's talk about how we can change that through the ACA. Secretary, thank you so much for having us today. Thank you for being here. And to give you an idea, we actually have folks from all corners of of the states and here talk, looking in and asking questions. And what we've done is we've culled it from the, the best questions from our audience or, so, or some questions that we saw that were reoccurring and basically hoping to get some more clarity and seeing how they can get more involved. Happy to see if Sorry. I can help. <laughs> so Secretary Burrell, as I mentioned, we saw a drop in the rate of uninsured Latinos last year. For those in our audience who are getting to get ready to re-enroll this year, can you tell us what has changed since last year? So a number of things uh, since last year have changed. And one of the things that has changed is we focus deeply on the consumer experience and making sure that we're able to cons serve that consumer as best we can. And that's a couple different things. One, it's making sure that we have a website that's up and working, uh, Cuidado de Salud. At Punta Gov came up at the same time as healthcare.gov and the sites have been up and working throughout the period. We wanted to make sure that that part was easier for the consumer. Then we focused on other things that would make it easier and simpler for the consumer in terms of using the website. And those are things that include everything from new applicants, mm -hmm. see an application, 70% of them, that went from 76 screens to 16 screens. If you're coming I'm sure back... everybody was, helpful, was thankful for <laughs> pleased that. Pleased with that. <laughs> in terms of re-enrollment, those coming back, you don't have to re-enter your information it's pre-populated the data. And specifically with the Latino community, there were a number of things that were hard last year. Mm -hmm. Hyphenated names sometimes cause problems. Mm -hmm. We fixed that in terms of the website. We've also created with our identity management in terms of making sure you're the person you say you are, okay. that we expanded the number of documents. That was another issue that was helpful and important to the community. Mm -hmm. And then in trying to meet the community where they are, we've changed our mix in terms of our Hispanic and Latino media, where our investments last Last year were about 10% and now they're up around a third. And I think what, 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 from what you're sharing with me is this idea that you've really, the department has really learned from their experience and listened to the community. And I think that's something that rarely happens in government where we actually see immediate change. So I think that that's one of the reasons why you've seen your numbers increase. We hope so. And just this idea of the consumer, what can we do to serve that consumer and make sure we meet them, go to the communities, use the voices that they trust. The other thing is with regard to mobile, uh, one of the things that we knew and learned last year is that the penetration of mobile is actually deeper than the Latino community than in the broader American population. Mm -hmm. So ability to use mobile was something we improved both for young people but also the Latino community and as a matter of fact we see that penetration greater today in terms of those who are coming through smartphones mm -hmm. to do enrollment is greater uh, through Cuidado de Salud Punta Gov. That's, that's, that's actually a game changer because I th that talks, speaks to the high mobility of a lot of folks in the Latino community, but also the fact that many of, the, many of them may not have broadband, but they do have something in their pocket that basically gives them that access. Yes, so we see <laughs> folks using that mobile technology, and then we see a group of folks in the community who want personalized assistance. Secretary Burrell, responsive government is always amazing. So <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> So our first question comes from Mardonio from Florida, and he wants to apply for the affordable health care coverage. How can he do that? So uh, what he should do, there are three different ways he can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first way, if he wants in-person assistance, he should go to localhelp.healthcare.gov, enter his zip code, and find out where he can have a local assister so he could do it face-to-face. -face. If he wants to do it by phone, 100 318 and that's in either English or Spanish. Okay. And or, what number that, what's that number again? 1-800-318-2596. Great. <laughs> or he could go to the website and do that. And there, that's healthcare.gov or cuidado de salud punto gov okay. in terms of going in uh, to either site and, and entering in that way. He should have ready when he comes. Mm -hmm. He should have his social security information or other documentation. 
in terms of his status. The second thing that he should have is any information about his or his family's income, if he's not an individual but a family, need the income information for the whole family. Mm -hmm. The third thing that he should have is any information about health insurance that he is already on or that is offered by his employer. Those are the main pieces of information. Those are the channels to go through. And I think it, it, it really speaks to, you don't have to have internet access to do this. I think no. a lot of folks were confused, but you can actually go to a physical location yes. and find it, or you can call, call on the phone and someone will help you navigate through that. That's right, and those events are happening, especially right now with our Latino Week of Action. Mm -hmm. uh, that's happening all over the country in rural America. I was just on the phone with the president of that organization, and they're having literally hundreds of events events across the country. So right now you mentioned the fact that you, it's the it's national awareness for, mm -hmm. for the Latino community and enrollment. Mm -hmm. Latinos account for about roughly 14.5% of those eligible for coverage through the health insurance marketplace, but they represent only 10.7% of the folks that are actually enrolled. What is the biggest, what is, one of the biggest concerns for our community is that they may not have the right resources available to them. How can we address that? So resources in two forms, I think, in mm -hmm. terms of addressing it. One is I think many people in the community believe it won't be affordable. That's right. And so the issue of do they have the resources to pay the premiums. And one of the things that we do and we know is that in this open enrollment period, 85% of the people are receiving financial assistance. That's a tax credit that helps you pay your premium and is incorporated in your premium price. So that's the issue of resources. Then there's the separate issue of the resources to actually navigate and understand the choices so they make a quality choice for them and their family in terms of both price and the plan that they do. And that's why we have these three different options in terms of people who want to do it. You can shop on the website. Mm -hmm. You can go to, it's actually window shopping, and <laughs> you can compare by premiums, mm -hmm. plans. You can compare by deductibles so that you can understand different price elements to what it will be out of pocket for you. In addition, if you want someone to walk it through the 1-800 number or that in-person assistance that we were talking about that's happening all over the country. And it's all bilingual, correct? Yes. Yes. So we mentioned earlier a few of the changes folks may see this year. One of them is changes to, uh, to plan benefits or prices. One of our audience members in New York asked, what can I do if the cost of my marketplace has gone up since last year? What other options does she have? So there are a couple different options. One is it's very important for her to come in and make sure she updates her information with regard to her income because the subsidy may have changed. If the plan has changed, her subsidy may have changed and she may I receive see. more in terms of that subsidy. So updating that information will help her see that additional, if she's able to get additional help. So that's one thing that can happen. The other thing is we encourage everyone who's been in the marketplace to shop. And the reason that we do is there are 25 percent more issuers. Mm -hmm. So more insurance companies have come in and are offering their plans. So shopping affords you the opportunity to find an affordable plan. And what we know is from those who enrolled last year, eight out of ten can find a plan with the subsidy that would be a hundred dollars or less in terms of that trying to get that to an affordable premium. So for everybody out there that may not have heard that $100 or less, meaning that you're paying more for your cell phone than you pay for your health insurance, right? <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. One of the changes implemented through the ACA was expanding Medicaid funding to allow more people to get much needed health care. Mm -hmm. But we know that not all states have chosen to offer this expanded coverage to its citizens. Florida is one of those states. And that's where the next question comes from. One of our Voto Latino members in Florida asks, if I live in a state where Medicaid isn't expanded and I can't afford the plans offered through the marketplace, Will I have to pay a tax fee at any time? So with regard to the answer to that question, it depends actually on an individual's income. In terms of folks, I think everyone knows, working very hard to make sure we get Medicaid expansion in as many states as possible. Very important for many people, especially in the Latino community. And so working very hard and want to make sure all the governors know, and I've said this since I started, I met with the National Governors Association and said, we want to be flexible. We want to do plans that are appropriate for states. We want to work with the states to get to the place where they can have the advantage of expanding that coverage for the individuals in their states. And that's important for individuals' health and economic security. Mm -hmm. It's also important for the economies as well that's because right. you reduce yeah. indigent care. For that individual in terms of their options, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Enter into the marketplace, see if there is a plan in terms of entering that income and finding out. If they're a person who's in what's called the coverage gap, 
-hmm. that they don't fit into the subsidy category because Medicaid hasn't been expanded, they will not pay any penalties. And I think a good thing to know is that there, these states are still haven't decidedly accepted the, the money. So one of the That's things right. that they can do is put on an activist hat and write to the members of Congress encouraging them, and to their state legislators encouraging them to accept the Medicaid funding. So we will continue <laughs> to do our part in yeah. terms of working with the governors. Mm -hmm. Latino millennials are known to be as gatekeepers to their families and for good reason. From the time you're young, you are either translating or scribing for your parents. That's why it's important for us at Volta Latino to make sure Latino millennials know about the Affordable Care Act. Many Latino families are also mixed status families, mm -hmm. which adds yet another mm -hmm. level of concern when we're talking about affordable health care. And last year, we were able to, one of the things that came up mm -hmm. was the fact that HHS had prob had, was not sharing the database with DHS. with DHS, which was incredibly important, and our community had not heard about that, so that actually helped up to uh, enrollment. But to further illustrate, though, what a, a young woman from California is asking us, can she apply for her mother if she doesn't have a Social Security number? So if her mother has status, you can <laughs> use a number of other different uh, documents. If she has a green card, or mm -hmm. there are a number of different, uh, in terms of status, mm -hmm. if there is status, you don't need the Social Security number, you just need that status. And we want to encourage all mixed families to come mm -hmm. in, uh, because many of the families, in terms of people that do have status in the family, they can come in. Mm -hmm. They can get coverage, and many of them can get financial assistance. So as you said, and I think it's important mm -hmm. and bears repeating, this is not an immigration issue. Mm -hmm. This is a health care issue. And so mixed status families should not be concerned about coming in. They should come in and get the coverage that they can for the parts of their family that they can and the financial support for those members that are eligible. That, and I think that's, a, that's an incredibly important to, str uh, to stress, especially yes. if you have, for example, a parent that may not qualify, their child definitely may if they were born here. That's correct? right. That's correct and may qualify <coughs> across the range and whether that's uh, for the marketplace or Medicaid or CHIP. We know that Latinas are frequently the health care decision makers in their families. They're the ones worrying about their family's health, but much too often they neglect their own health. Under the ACA, most health plans cover services unique to women's health needs like mammograms, pap smears, maternity care, and contraception. Because of the Affordable Care Act, more than 48 million women are now benefiting from the preventative care out of costs, out of pocket costs. But we've seen challenges to some of these health services, in particular, access to contraception. As the, t the courts try to navigate the delicate balance between religious liberty and a woman's right to choose. A, qu a question that came from Jessica uh, from the Supreme Court was, after the Hobby Lobby case, mm -hmm. I'm worried about what my employer will do and if I will have access to contraception coverage. How can I still access the services if my employer doesn't provide them? So we're continuing to navigate that space of making sure we respect religious uh, views and at the same time make sure that women have appropriate preventative care. And if she works for a not-for-profit entity, we have put in place uh, a solution by which one can go directly to an insurer and get the coverage for the things that one chooses that they would want to do. And right now we uh, are working to implement a potential solution in the for-profit. There were two different court cases. There are mm -hmm. cases around the not-for-profits, mm -hmm. which we had a solution in place. And then after the Hobby Lobby decision, uh, we are working to implement that in a way that we respect the religious decision-making of those companies that choose to do that. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, make sure that women have the access they need to preventative care. And what's the timeline around that when they will so be So we are in the, uh, in the middle of a, what's called a rulemaking process. We mm -hmm. put out what is a proposed rule, and that's about gathering information and response to how we were thinking and to learn mm -hmm. how big that community will be. Mm -hmm. uh, the decision was about a single company, mm -hmm. and so the question of how other companies will or will not exercise that decision is something we're learning about. And we're hopeful that during this year and in the earlier half of the year that we will, uh, with regard to the for-profit companies. Right. For the not-for-profit companies, that's in place, okay. and there is a means by which people can get their coverage. And where can they find out information if they were, are working for the non-for-profit? They can go to, to I, the government site? And the government site, I think, but we should okay. check on that and make sure we get that information to you. Okay, thank you. And finally, thank you so much for, I guess we're, we're wrapping up. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. I think that it's been not only informative, but the opportunity to have a real conversation with our audience. I know that last time this was something that was overwhelmingly helpful, and they were able to basically share it and 
the more, more important thing is not only do they share it with themselves, but they share it with their families. So thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you, because we know, as, as you said, the millennials and the influence, and it is about the trusted voice and making sure that we get the information to communities so that they can understand and make choices for themselves with regard to increasing their health security and their financial security and reducing that disparity with this community. Mm -hmm. So thank you for having me. No, thank you. And thank you, everybody, so much again for tuning in. Remember, you still have time to sign up for affordable health care. Yes. And make sure you're telling your family and your friends to get covered, too. Last year, the Latino uninsured rate decreased from 36% to 23%. Let's keep that number going down. You can stop for healthcare, you can shop for healthcare coverage today at healthcare.com, cuidadodesalud.gov, 1-800-318-2596. Make sure you sign up by February 15th. Thanks for joining us.